Hello everyone, right then, so we've got Carol the Barrel here at the moment, that's because I was working on her earlier, I finally made her little pop animation a bit much better than it was. Um, all I did was move her down by one pixel, but I had to do it in the, the perfect spot so she didn't look deformed. And that just that extra pixel has like just made that hop so much better because it barely looked like she was moving before it looked like she was sliding across the screen almost when she was walking mainly from the the top when she when she was from the side it doesn't look as bad but from the top like when she's on the uh, y-axis moving it just it was like she was sliding but she's definitely hopping now and I even made this little note as well because I'm super like paranoid that uh let's just uh show, show you guys this properly I'm super paranoid that like I'll forget the part where <laughs> where I moved it down so I literally took print screens and of where I moved the areas down by one because I have to do this for all the other barrels as well um, so they're all the same and it's so easy to just forget such an easy thing like this so it's always good to take notes so um, hi Lord how you doing so good to see you again how are things going um, hi thank you at C for the follow not interested in 2d rpgs but your voice really relaxes me yes well that's a good thing at least i do get a lot of uh, a, a lot of compliments on my voice so thank you but yes i i'm a 2d rpg nerd and that's what the sort of content you'll get here it does help if you do like that i have to say but at the same time i'm not gonna not gonna throw you out for for not being a fan as long as you're a nice human being <laughs> which i'm sure you are she does have a nice voice thank you i'm great now but welcome to stream welcome and hi yasmin how you doing what sort of games do you like then i feel like i have to say well i have to ask now cv like what's your what is your cup of tea when it comes to to video games right guys so we'll We'll just uh, hide Carol for now, but I'm going to get rid of that as well because I'm not going to edit the other barrels now because that's not what we're currently working on. But when I when I start polishing that flashback scene again, I, I will because there's a couple of things to uh, to still do with that. But it's, it's very close to being done. But today is going to be our last scene stream because we've been doing scene stuff for a couple of weeks now um, and I'm at the point now that I want to do something else so I'm going to do the rest of the scene stuff off stream and when it's done I'm going to show you guys in the scene channel in the discord it'll get posted in there. Um, I Yeah so we we made some progress and but there's still a bit to do but i'm confident the scene stuff i can get it done off the street next week um but what i will be doing next week will be some character sheets because we have a real um backlog of them so if i get I'll just hide photoshop for now i've got my trello page up here so just have a zoom in. I have deleted the character sheets and the polls that were here because I kind of want our Trello page to be more of a just a schedule thing, not an archive of images. Um, but I will put the a link to all the images in one of the Discord channels. This one, I'll keep this as like our archive section. Um, and even though they're on the website, I want them on here as well, just for people who are on mobile and want easier access to to seeing them um but yeah so we've got all these character sheets can you guys see the names big enough so we've got we've got a little a smaller screen now so but there we go so that those are who we we have who are the folks that have 
recently reached the 500 raindrops uh, there, but the peeps have been like Fantasia and Dave have been waiting ages for their characters. So it's about time I get some of those done because it's been on the list for a while. So I thought I want to I want a chill week next week. I thought I want to have a nice chill week. So let's get some of those character sheets done off stream and. Um, then the week after that, we're going to jump into the really intense stuff, which is the bo first boss mechanics again. So uh, that'll be fun. Well, I'm playing D&D &D in real life most of the time. Oh, that's interesting. This project is, is takes a lot from D&D, &D, the way it's run. It, and like the storytelling style and improvisation is kind of similar to D&D, &D, I guess in a weird way um yesterday i was really sick but i'm recovering today also i posted a picture to discord of my new avatar oh new avatar i want to have a look where did you put it yasmin did i did i see it oh here it is i thought i was gonna say i, I, I didn't see it but i see you've just posted it now are they is this like a new avatar maker thing because i've seen them around and i want to make one as well <laughs> I'll give you a, a woody gasm emote. I like it though because we've kind we've kind of decided. Well, Yasmin's decided she wants to be a pyromancy cat, cat in our game, and I'm all for it. That's for sure. And I have removed pyromancer from the character form, by the way, Yasmin. Um, so I can save it for you. So when you do get the 500 raindrops, I'll put it back on so you can <laughs> so you can use it for yours. Just so no one steals it from you. Because if somebody is very passionate about one of the playable character classes, I I will keep it for them for a while for a, for a for a, an amount of time. Um, because once you have once someone has taken a class that's it then it's taken i'm keeping all playable character classes exclusive to what to to a a, a playable character um but i hope you get better soon yasmin yeah it sucks being sick i've got an unsettled stomach but it's it's better than it, it was earlier which i'm glad about because i didn't want to cancel scripts and dream but I'm getting into WoW and I play Diablo 3. Oh, awesome. Cool. Wow. I, Final Fantasy XIV has, has tended to be my MMO, but WoW is a very popular one, that's for sure. Um, there you go. DM you the link. Awesome. Thank you, Yasmin. I'm going to make one later now. Yay. <laughs> okay, folks. So, um, what, I, what I did want to do was I wanted to uh, add more to our to-do list because... I think it'll be nice to have a a bit of a plan laid out for for what what's going to be coming up because I mentioned very briefly on um, the street our last stream that it'd be really cool if I could get a playable build of Raindrop Chronicles episode one out by mid year perhaps i said may but i doubt it'll be out by may but i'll be work starting working on getting the build ready in may um it, it's more likely going to be june if if it'll be out that it'll be out by then um so also trello is really cool by the way guys if you are making a project or doing anything that requires a lot of organization trello is really really good um so i've got april to do here and all this is all battle related stuff i've also got in progress um as well uh, i need to feel like i should merge these though I wonder if I can give a tag, a label to in progress. Have a look. Have we got a, a colour? I 
Well, I added it, but it's not showing up for some reason. Um, well, apparently, suddenly stopping to tell your antidepressant will result in circulatory system shut down. I'm a dumb dumb. Oh, no. Oh, no. You'll be okay, though, won't you? hope so. Trello sure is helpful. The free version is for the small scale projects. Oh, this is the fr free version. I never realised there was even a paid one, but everything has, a, has some kind of model like that these days, it seems. Um, my tummy's doing like going crazy, guys, right now. So if I if I ever like pause or go quiet on stream today, it's because I'm like my tummy going crazy. <laughs> okay um so i'm just like having a mess around with this i'm not going to spend too long doing this because i want to get i'm excited to get on with some scene stuff today because it's our last going to be our last scene stream before i start doing the rest off stream but i want to really get this organized better because i think i think we, we need to put a bit more on here but yeah i don't, I don't uh Unfortunately, I don't know if it if it lets you add a second label because I'm trying, and it's only kind of showing the first. Maybe I'm just doing it wrong, but it seems like it's been added because it's there. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't. It's not like we have to show what's in progress. I kind of do bits at a time, everything anyway, so everything is in progress. Um, so, look, we got a cute little duck egg coming out, an egg, a chick coming out, an egg. Because it's April. Okay. Uh, so, I'm going to just move that over there a sec because it's in the way. Um, So yeah, that's what we're doing. The dialogue and cutscenes to Main Quest 2 is kind of really been everything that we've been doing for a while. And Main Quest 2 is very, like, chunky. Chunky. I don't know if chunky is the word, but you know, when you say a quest that's got quite a lot of stuff in it, it's not a quest that can, that's over in 10 minutes. It's quite a... Uh, a lengthy one so it's taken a while because of that the quest in itself has two lengthy cut scenes in it um i don't know if i should call them cut scenes i prefer calling them scenes now because the word cut scene to me makes people think it's like a movie um and that isn't what we're doing with our scenes as are just like <laughs> normal scenes and the dialogue boxes and stuff in them and you still have to like click the button to get through everything and you get choices so it's not actually a movie scene where you can just sit back and watch so uh i'm probably i'm probably gonna just change that wording because of that um Here we go, I think this is where we can do that. Trello is very useful. Hack and plan is good too. Oh, hack and plan. Thank you, Imagine Mix, for the follow. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Follow how we get. We very um kind of in a very good category in science and technology. I've I feel when it comes to people finding my stream, um, for sure. Um, sometimes I still feel like I'm miscategorised though. I mean, I'm I'm really not because what I'm doing is game dev, but it's so like storytelling driven, storytelling driven, and um, that sometimes I feel like an actual cre a creative writing category would fit what we do better. For at least some of the streams, anyway. Maybe the more like mechanic streams, like the battle stuff, would be fit for that. But, but yes. Um, welcome to the stream. Okay. Um, but yes, Twitch will never add a writing category ever. I don't know why, because it's like a pretty common creative thing. 
You can't hide Rex. I see your avatar. Look, call us. Honestly, the people that have characters in the game, I don't I don't think they mind being called out. Look, especially not someone like Rex who has like the most <laughs> raindrops in the stream anyway. But when it comes to new like newcomers to the stream or anyone that's new, I'd never dream in a million years of calling them out of luck because I'd never I'd never want to show up anyone like that. <laughs> You can stream under writing and have the game dev tag. Yes. See, writing isn't a category though, is it? Like, I've looked, like, I even put a tweet up a couple of weeks ago saying, Twitch, can we have a writing category, please? And I did get some comments. People like, yeah, I'd be on that writing category. So it's, it seems like people are interested in it, for sure. But yeah, unfortunately, I don't even have the option to do that because there isn't a writing category. There's a writing tag though. I know you always use that. But honestly, it's never used. No one ever finds me under that because I, ch I check my stats and no one ever does. So um, I feel like tags aren't really a thing that are paid attention to, which is unfortunate. I mean, maybe the odd person finds me under that, but I'm talking it's the odd the odd person like the odd one if ever um most people definitely look under the directory the, the proper categories like the science and technology i only ever call it a reg so it's fine <laughs> um right so so yes we main quest 2 we've been working on it for ages guys ages but so much has happened in the second main quest. Like, when I release the next story so far video, it's going to be all what happens in that second main quest. And you'll see how much there is. And honestly, I was I was randomly thinking about it last night. I was thinking, how many main quests will episode one have, I wonder, all together? Because it's taken us a whole year to do two main quests but i think that's i mean that's kind of how it is because we've been doing this project for a year now but the very the early days were very slow and the first like 50 or so streams we'd actually not even started any quests or cutscenes properly at all so i kind of shouldn't really see it that way it's i'd say it's more like six months we've done um two quests in that's more realistic <laughs> and true um but yeah they're, they're they're kind of um big there's i at the moment i could imagine there being about four main quests in episode one so i could say we're about halfway through episode one's main story but obviously there'll be side quests as well um I hope to have at least quite a few side quests so that'll like pad things out but I say that and when I say pad things out I don't mean filler by the way because filler's the worst we're not gonna have filler in Raindrop Chronicles I'm gonna be very 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 kind of firm on to when it comes to side quests about the quality of the side quests we have in the game and of course I'm going to encourage lots of creative ideas with you guys about where we can take them because that's honestly in my opinion how we come up with the best ideas when we get together as a community and just ramble together about what we can do and where it can go like in the last stream, Chub Cheeks just came in at the end of stream and came up with like a really cool idea. And I was like, oh my God, that's really good. And it just, it, it has added so much just his idea. And I'm kind of like, yeah, we'll probably go with that. Um, and I wouldn't have thought of that on, on my own. So that's why it's so cool when, when you guys come up with cool ideas. Like I said, Carol the Barrel wouldn't have even existed if it wasn't for somebody here in the community because i'd never have come up with the idea of a sentient talking barrel that's for sure um but yes yeah, so really that is our first task get the dialogue and scenes for main quest to that cross which we're very very close to do finishing now um, that's what we've been working on so the scene like i said it's the last gonna be the last scene um stream for a while because i'm gonna do the rest off stream um, the rest is battle mechanics stuff and honestly that's all going to be happening 
after it the same work because we need to finish that boss battle it's very important hi nungi how you doing again it's so cool to see you how are things going welcome back to the stream hope you're having a good friday so we have at the moment do skills for the everbloom forest boss um i'm actually gonna edit the wording of that just a bit because it isn't just skills it's the hot boss as a whole because in fact the skills have already been done ages ago actually um we spent a few streams coming up with some cool skills for them and they're already done so but the actual boss isn't done there's a lot of battle the balancing to do still making sure they're not too op um making sure the skills themselves work properly as well because although we thought of the skills and we know mechanically how the skills are going to work we need to make sure they're actually working and of course putting sounds and animations with those skills as well because it just brings it to life more makes it more visually and visually and and not just visually but the sounds as well it just makes it much much better so that's why we've got do all battle action sequences animation and sound so far um, i'm feeling like i should merge that in with this skills balancing animations sounds balancing um action sequences that what basically that is if is um the movement like say for example if one of the characters has the skill jump you an action sequence would be the actual jump like they wouldn't just walk up to the couch and stab them you'd actually see the jump so that's what the action sequence is it'd be the process of actually making them do that jump but for the everbloom forest boss because they're the fruits paint it'll, the action sequence for them would be them doing that with their brush and painting um so skills action sequences, animation sounds and balancing so That means I can we can delete that one now. I don't think you can delete in Trello. You can only archive things, it seems. Um, just keep things tidy, you know, to have a have it all in one like little box rather than have everything separate so and the next one is do four first four skills of warrior hunter and vampire okay so what that is is the skill tree because we because we've got a warrior hunter and vampire in the game so far those are the only playable classes we've currently introduced we've got way more but those playable characters haven't we haven't met them yet and they haven't joined the party so we haven't actually made their skill trees yet and that's we don't i'm not going to do that because it's too overwhelming to do every single you know playable character skill tree in one go like it would take me months to do that in one go and so just for variety and to keep you know focused on the content that's important i'm only doing the the very very first skills of the the characters that are actually in the game which is warrior hunter and vampire and yeah that we've done the first four mainly because the area of the dungeon that we've been in the forest will very likely those will be the max amount of skills that you'll be able to unlock at that point unless you grind it like crazy then you might be able to unlock more um but i do want to sort of get like a template of the ideal skill tree mapped out just so i'm not taken by surprise by anything later it's always good to get that design mapped out um and i think i'll definitely do that at some point too but we'll probably do the next four uh skills and then it'll be eight all together for those when we get to the next sort of fighting dungeon area of the game because then that'll open up the chance to unlock more skills at that point 
literally just gone not Friday anymore here. Oh, really? You're in the future. My goodness. What's it like being in the future, Nungi? It's so nice to see someone managing one of these boards properly. I teach my students to use Trello and they inevitably ignore it after the first class. Really? Why do they ignore it? It's so fun. I think I, maybe I'm just a geek. But I just think it's really fun. Like, I, it's the colours. It's these labels that get me excited. <laughs> but yeah, I've been meaning to completely redo our Trello page for a while because it isn't as fancy as I want it to be. I don't know if fancy is the word because I think it looks fine. But more like I want more information in here so you guys that do look can be like, oh wow, this is all everything Rosie's got in mind for this month. Because I think feel like it was a little bit vague before. So I'm just trying to expand on what it, exactly I'm going to be doing for April, May and, and June. That's kind of the goal right now. Um, and also it's already nearly the end of April. So this is likely going to be changed to May because <laughs> we're, we're, we're at the end of the month already now. Um, okay, so what I'm going to say here, because I feel like this is super vague, it being worded like do first four skills. I'm going to say... Um, do skill tree for and warrior and vampire I'll put the first four skills only in brackets because then I'm still reminding myself that yeah I'm only doing the first four um, because that's important we're not doing the whole skill tree at this stage um and of course when another playable character gets introduced because honestly guys i think one will by my main quest um three that it's likely that one of the playable characters we've we have waiting in the shadows who've had a character sheet filled in will make our appearance and join the party and of course they'll fit into the story in a good way we'll make sure of it um but once we have the next playable character join, we'll have to obviously do think of their first four skills as well for their skill tree. But we're a bit early to do that now because we haven't even started main quest three yet. So we won't be doing that yet. That will be when we start the next part. Um, but yeah, guys, I've just done a command there to my Trello page. So if anyone does want to like have a closer look at this as I do it, feel free to have a click. Um, Okay, so do skill tree for War 100 and Vampire. Do you have a blue forest boss skill option so you can balance it? Okay. I'm trying to think now is there anything I've missed there that's important? Um, honestly, that's really it. Like, once we've finished this cutscene we've been doing with the fruits and obviously the boss battle that accompanies that scene, main quest 2 is over. We'll have the post battle scene as well, of course, where Rose does the painting and they head back to like fall and hand the quest in, but um, that's, that's that probably won't be very big as a scene, so it's... So yes, that really, once, once those tasks are done um i feel like i should add something else here actually do skill tree for playable characters And I put that because people looking might not realise that Warrior Hunter and Vampire are actually the playable characters of the game. So that just makes things a bit clearer. Um, but yeah, honestly, after these tasks are done, because this is, like I say, this is going to be our last um, scene stream of the week. 
and I'll be doing the rest off stream so this really today will be the last opportunity for you guys to have some input in the scene as we do it if you wish like um next week is going to be a chill week uh, I feel like I'm in the mood to relax for a bit so I'm going to be doing these character sheets this big list here I'm going to get some of those done and we'll see how many we get done but even if we just do half of them by the end of next week that will be so good because so many of you have been waiting so long now to to get your characters and you'll get to be walking across the screen here as well which will be really cool to see some new characters walking across if when they come in stream that is they'll be walking across um and uh and then after that i want to get into the battle mechanic stuff so that'll be that'll be may won't it because it's the last week of april next week so what i'm gonna do then let's just can we copy this copy list that's it so this will be may what what's what emoji would be good for may chat because <laughs> I it's it's weird what would suit my because I it was easy to think of April because Easter an egg with a chick um I can't even think what would be good for my I suppose it's spring so maybe a flower but time to go into town my children always a pleasure to see you speak soon bye all oh my goodness I hope that you have loads of fun guys however it is you get you into town yeah, them. Good luck, as we are. Hope it goes well and you have fun. Thanks for hanging out. And yeah, I don't think they enjoy organised things. They just want to make games without planning or thought for all. Poor sweet summer children. <laughs> That's for sure. You cannot make a game without uh, organising. It's not a, a good one anyway. <laughs> Um, do you have much help with coding etc a flower well it when it comes to coding rpg maker is very very nice to you because everything is already sort of there and in place and it the engine itself is very is so visual and kind of easy to get something to work but of course there are challenges especially when it comes to the battle mechanic side of things because things do start getting a bit more mathsy at that maths numbers at that point formulas and you do have to kind of know your stuff somewhat to get the skill of working properly um and that is sort of my weak point i will admit but what i usually do is i usually either ask someone in chat <laughs> or hope someone in chat is around to like help me or i go on the forums the rpg maker forums and if I, there's ever any troubleshooting i post my issue in there and see if anybody can answer or usually there's already a post that somebody else has done in the past that is the same problem as mine and uh i just read that and do it do the solution of what was posted for them so there's always a way around it i find i find it just you have to just figure it out it's all you can do isn't it when you self teach so some in some way i'll, I'll figure it out I mostly work with Unreal, but I'm interested in looking at this kind of game. Awesome. Did you see the uh, command monkey before when you came in? Because I do have a command. Um, and if you click that, it will tell you more about the the engine. And it is very... It's very... Um, it's just great for newbies. Like, even children could use RPG Maker. It's that easy. You probably wouldn't do something amazing as a kid, but, you know, you'd still get something working and playable, even if it's, uh, yeah. Um, hi, Debbie. I, I say it is not the engine that matters. It is the person, unless unless it is the game guru. No one used that. Her. What's game guru? Is that an engine? I'm a noob. <laughs> I don't even know. That's a good point, Debbie, because I agree. I think that it's it's the creator behind the pro the the game or you know they i know games out there that were made in rpg maker that were really amazing because they were stretched and more this stuff was done in them and it and it's because of the person that did them the reason they're good not because the engine same for any other engine any engine at all i agree for sure 
Okay, so I'm, I want to find an emoji for me. Um, because we, I want to kind of get a plan out, guys, because we've got April here, but I want to get the next couple of months up as well. Um, so here we go, May to do, create list. So what I'm, I'm going to do... is those battle ones are going to get moved to May. So it's a pity we can't stack in Trello, you know, like put um, things under each other, because it'd be nice to have Mays under Aprils. Um, so that, this will take the rest of this month and then obviously catch it. So what, what I'm going to do is also... Let me just copy that and I'll drag it here and I'm going to say, obviously it's not MPC, NPCs of Lightfall, I'm going to have it as create community members character sheets. I mean, that doesn't have to be there because it's not related to the game. So actually, I'm not going to bother. Um, well, it is related to the game. But, you know, it's a separate thing. And it's already here anyway. Um, okay, so we're just thinking what comes next. Because after, once we've done this, everything opens up now, then at that point. We had the opportunity to start thinking about side quests. We had the opportunity to actually put make sure the game is working as an actual build because that's something i want to make sure i want to make sure everything's tidied up that nothing's messy and that you can when you start the game you can actually play it without encountering any issues at all so everything needs to be connected and working so i'd say that is probably a goal hang on then level design and mapping um One thing I did want to do was tidy up the, the level design of Everbloom because, unlike Ford's Bar, because although we spent ages doing it and it's basically done, there's a few things I've noticed while doing some play tests that I think need just tidying up a bit. Um, there's a few little visual glitches, and I want maybe some of the areas where you walk between the maps to be designed a bit better as well because there's some bushes in the way that shouldn't be there, and that wouldn't be good if you walked into a bush um so i just want to tidy things like that up and i think i want to make like fall into a parallax map as well so um i am gonna make that a task for me as well so instead of do all six maps i would be i'm gonna say um tidy up everbloom forest i'll put Lakefall and Everbloom Forest maps. Um, and yeah, so wow, side quests and developing the NPCs in Lakefall even further and thinking about world building, it's all going to be all that as well we'll be doing a lot of that sort of thing um and also main story and plot decide what will happen in main quest three as well that's another important one so we'll put that there in fact i think that needs to go first Because we always decide what's going to happen in the a main quest before right? we actually build the dialogue and scenes. We get that plan, that little summary and outline decided first. And then the dialogue and scenes work comes after that once we've thought of how we're going to do it. And usually when it comes to deciding what will happen, we'll just talk as a community and bounce off ideas and I'll make notes of them all. And... Um, 
we are likely put loads of polls up and I'll curate, curate what's on the polls from what you guys have suggested and whatever tops the votes or be the direction we take it in. Um, dedication to your product is so important. If the work is put in, it's quite likely they'll succeed, for sure. I'd say passion and dedication are the main things. And if you don't have that, it doesn't matter how actually how talented you are or or all these other things yeah if you haven't got the passion or dedication dedication it'll likely just be left and neglected you want to run a testing phase set up a testing table yes testing's another thing for me because as i'm like i haven't like released a game before so this will be a whole new thing for me doing testing but we can totally do it and you guys a lot of you are pros and have made games yourselves so when it comes to testing i'm sure you know a lot of resources and um videos and help guides and that i can look at to help organize that in the best way possible you saying testing table already has uh, made me think, oh yeah, let, let, let have to look into testing tables. I've seen a ton of projects flop because people lost motivation or started getting greedy. Yeah, and greed is like a very interesting one because of course every creative person, and I'm sure the majority of creative people out there will admit that they would love their creative project to be their livelihood because you know, that is the dream that is the dream for sure to be able to spend time working on your game not have to have a, a second job that t steals the time away from what's important but at the same time greed is never a good thing for sure and yeah motivation i think for sure, if people have got expectations and they expect to get rich or something, that could be a reason why they lose motivation as well, because it isn't game where they thought. So for sure that would make sense why that why that would happen to some. Um, okay, so decide what happened in main quest three. Um so we got we gotta think what we can fit in in May. So looking at May, we're four weeks in May, and I think week one, potentially we could get the battle stuff done in just the first week of May, but it might also take us into the second week of May as well. But I definitely think the last two weeks of May, we that will be when we'd be able to start working on, on things like this, the next part of the game. But honestly, with all this, it's going to be about getting a build getting a build done because as i said to you guys on wednesday i really want to kind of make it my main like goal while doing all these little tasks to actually make sure it's going to be a playable build by mid-year um and yes of course when a playable build like very basic of course like a lot of the side quests if any will not be available at that point you'll as long as you could walk around like Fallen Everbloom and, you know, fight the in, the, the creatures there and uh, you can level up, put skills into your skill tree, you can do have the cut, encounter the cut scenes, trigger them and there's no bugs or no weird stuff going on when that happens and everything's connected and working well. Um, if everything like from Main Quest 1 and 2 and all those little bits are working from the very start of the game to when you finish the first boss and have that post battle cutscene and hand your quest in life. Well, if that's all working, I'd say that would be enough to be my first playable build of the game. And I'd be happy to to release that um, when all that's working and i don't think that will take too long because it's already all there um when all this is being done and we've got to this point after we've done the battle stuff everything is done um really it'll just all be about tidying it up and just doing lots of test plays and making sure there's nothing like up with it all but i've just realized user interface 
that's one because there's going to be there's a few like messy bits I've got to fix in the user interface like the options menu um, so I'm going to put that there as well and in fact I'm going to move that down because I feel like the next part of the story and doing that bit the side quests and what's going to happen in main quest 3 that's going to come when I'm happy with the build and everything that we've currently got and everything else is tidied up. I feel like tidying up and getting the build right um, should be priority before we start moving into the next part of the story because otherwise I could be putting too much on myself if I'm already starting the next bit of content before I've even tidied up what we've done before. So yes, that can go after that. Um, so I'll word this as... Um, Tidy up options in the menu. So really what's in the options, just to clarify that, because some of you might have not been around during those streams when we discussed the options. Um, it was around stream 50 or so, I think. But what it is in our game... I've kind of made a promise that I want to keep and that is make it flexible in terms of how what you show on the screen like if you want the mini map to show if you want uh, the quest markers to show or if you want them hidden I kind of want to have lots of show and hide options available in the options menu because community people who've come in I've had mixed opinions some of you have said you adore mini maps you adore that those little um quality of life additions like quest markers mini maps and enemy indicators and like uh, all those little things that make you know where to go in the game and what to pick up and some people have said they love that and other people have said they hate that they've said i like playing an rpg and it doesn't mate tell me where to go i prefer they've said i prefer it when it's like proper old school and it's actually you know you have to figure it out for yourself where the quests are so some people have said that so that's what made me think i'm going to make that a thing in the options menu where the player can choose whether they want to hide certain things or show it because then people have that customization then and they can play the game how they like because i definitely feel like that's important for sure i think it is so um i've seen a ton of oh yeah i've already read that you want a modular ui a modular ui yeah it's i mean rpg maker when it comes to the ui and the menu it's very basic um like you just have to do what you have to do and yes there's plugins available luckily i found a plugin that will help me do that with in the options menu and it, it looks to be pretty straightforward i've looked through the instructions and there's a bit of thinking involved with the setup but it's not too complicated um, and i've already started it actually it's just a bit messy so i've got to make sure it's all working perfectly and um, that'll be really cool. I, I want to make sure that that options and those choices in the menu are working before I release the playable build for sure. Um, and of course, the tidying up of the maps for like Fall and Everbloom Forest. Scaly dropping in for a lurk, and also I wanted to say I'm so far behind. I didn't know until this week that you and Rex were a thing because I wasn't in Twitch forever. I ship it, and you guys are both wonderful. Thank you, Scaly. Yeah, me and Rex are with, like for ages now, like early 2018 yeah so it well it took us a while to like be official because the long distance you know he lives in the usa and i live in uk so for that reason we were like we wanted to make sure it was right and it was the right thing to do but then eventually we yeah we decided that we were gonna tell people and stuff so so yes, and I think that was by the time that happened, you probably you were gone by that point, Scaly, I think. But it's lovely to have you back. I'm really happy to see you back on Twitch. Are you going to start streaming again as well? But thank you as well for the lurk and, and for, the, for the sweet comments. I really appreciate that. Super appreciate that. So yes, uh, 
and it's going to help me a lot just getting this organized as well guys i'm glad i'm taking a little bit of extra time today to do this because when you have like your, your tasks written up you're less likely to go off track and of course i don't punish myself if i don't meet deadlines like if some of these take me longer to do i'm not gonna like go mad at myself because that happens in game dev a lot of the time you have to extend the deadlines i mean look at cyberpunk 2077 that's been extended and it will be a better game for it no more streaming for me unfortunately it felt more like a job than having fun so i stepped back now i just didn't get, enjoy games by myself in my free time oh for sure scaly i felt the same way about streaming video games and that's why i do this now instead of actually game on stream because i found it was like ruining my love for games and i didn't like that because i love games but it felt more like a chore for sure to play a video game on stream but it's so nice to just play games off stream now i think it just didn't suit me i mean some people love doing it and credit to them but for me i'm a very i i'm slow with games i i'm not the best gamer i'm not the most skilled so i tended to get a lot of backseating <laughs> and it just made me feel bad so um, for the things like little things like that just piled on top of me I guess and I've been doing this for a year now and it's definitely my thing so I'm really happy um, for sure to be doing this now uh, okay and it, not even just the options in the menu I've even thought about doing a complete redo of the menu in general an rpg maker can be pretty basic when it comes to customizing the menu look but i've been doing some research and there is a plugin out there i forgot the name of it but i'll find out there's a plugin out there that lets you really make fancy menus and someone i think it was white what actually told me about it and the only issue was it the only problem with it is it's quite pricey more than what i want to pay because i i'm a, I'm a frugal guys i say so many times that this project is a zero pound budget and that's because this isn't really like i don't get loads of money from doing this so i feel it would be foolish of me to to spend spend the very little money i do get on things so i try to keep it a zero pound budget because of that um and honestly i kind of like that challenge to make again with a zero pound budget but at the same time like if there's something that's very you know i feel like oh gosh i need this this is just gonna be brilliant to have that all i don't mind just paying for it i guess i don't mind doing that so I th I've been thinking about it and I probably will for that menu because it just makes the menus look better. So that'll be something I do as well. So I'm going to add that to this as well. So tidy up options in men in the menu. Um, consider um, redesigning the menu. Instead of consider, I'm actually going to say it. Redesign the menu, not never mind reconsider. We'll just do it. <laughs> Look that up. I'll say whole menu. So it looks like, judging by this, we've got a lot of tidying up, cleaning, redesigning stuff to do once we've dealt with the battle mechanics. Um, and I'm thinking, let's add June to this. How do we add a, a thing again? Oh, here we go, add another list. So um, we'll have, oopsie copy and paste this card let's 
Diego Draws, thank you for that follow. How are you doing? Welcome to the stream. So now we're going to add June. Uh, what's a good emoji for June? It's summer, isn't it, in June? So let's have a sun. June is also my birthday. <laughs> Oh no, there we go, add list. So that can go there. <laughs> I'm gonna delete in progress now as well because we're not gonna use that anymore. Add that one. Um, so this one's gonna be moved to June. And so will side quest creation. So as for like the redesign the whole menu, I might want to do that in stages. So there's a chance I might like just do the options for now for the first build release and then think about redesigning at some point between the first build and the final release of episode one. Um, I always say as long as it's done before episode one, that's the main thing. Um, right. So, have we got one of the... Characters and world building. I feel like we need that in more. Have we... I don't think we've got a, a side quest. A side quest. we don't have a side quest one which is weird because that's important so can we I don't know if we can add a new label I think it limits us because I remember adding one and it got rid of one. Oh, we've got one here let's edit that I think we've used up all the colors though Oh no, we got yellow. We still got yellow, so. Thank you, what, for the follow? <laughs> what, the intro bang? Welcome to the stream. And okay, Rose, I need to go to bed now. Good luck, my e Trello, amazing. Unfortunately, I struggle to catch UK streamers regularly, but I'll try to keep track of how your project is going. Well, I appreciate you stopping by, youngie, despite the... The difficult time zones it's the unfortunate thing why can't we all live in the same time zone right but thanks for stopping by and for the chats and for the tips appreciate it nungi have a good sleep have a super good sleep uh right so i'm going to just look for a good emoji for side quests Let's use a question mark or something. It's a shame that yellow is not very visible, I have to say, but you can't change the colors, I don't think. Um. Ah, I know. We'll just use the green one. Because I don't think we're using uh, the, the green one that was poles before. We got rid of that. Um, of course, we're still doing poles back here. I don't put them on my Trello page anymore. So...
good to keep it purely related to project tasks, I think. Halif, thank you for the follow. Welcome, guys. I appreciate uh, those of you stopping in for the first time and um, giving me a follow. I'm going to put a few commands in chat for you guys to have a, a little look at. Um, I mean, the website's there, so I don't have to put that command in, but I also have a YouTube page, guys. Um, I think the YouTube is probably one of the most valuable things to look at actually because that's where we've got the story so far and um, at all the previous stream vaults as well as well as some sneak peeks and lore discussions of the game so I feel free to just have a little nosy if you're curious about what we do here and ask any questions as well if you'd like to I'm friendly <laughs> okay so side quests we're gonna say Start considering what side quests hmm, I'll just put I don't want to say just do side quests, I just want to be a bit more explanatory. Um And then what side quest there'll be Nightfall and Everbloom Forest. Pardon me, I'm getting the best. Yeah, um, because um episode one, if you're if you've done if you've uh, looked at a peak or browse, you probably know by now, guys, especially if you're a regular here, that that this game is episodic. And uh episode one is what we're working on and it's gonna feature lake fall and everbloom forest i'd say that that is really where all of episode one is gonna take place and um i prefer doing that rather than just moving on to a complete new zone and leaving everbloom forest behind so early on because there's so many npcs and so much potential for world building here and just really bringing it to life and expanding on the content here that we can have i don't i don't want to move on when we've spent so much hard work doing the mapping you know and making it super pretty because that mapping of everbloom forest took us some time um that's for sure so um we're gonna really make it pretty beefy in terms of content and we're gonna have a bunch of side quests there but like i say no filler no filler guys and um i am gonna be strict on side quests like i know people might be um very wanna like have a side quest of their own in there but i've got to be careful as well because it has taken six months to write to put just two quests in the game so it is very time consuming just to put a single quest in the game and of course I could shorten them if I put really short ones in it would take much less time but I'm I'm sort of the way I do things and the sort of games I like aren't the filler side quests I despise filler side quests it can put me off a game just seeing quests like that um, you know I kind of want every side quest to be extremely memorable and have a strong message you know and we're gonna we're gonna have a bunch of fun now because we're gonna brainstorm ideas for these side quests and we've already got a couple in mind that we talked about months ago like stumpy <laughs> stumpy you like who's stumpy stumpy um is very precious and he's definitely gonna have a side quest that's for sure um, so decide what happened in main quest read, consider what side quest there will be 
in Lightfall and Everbloom Forest and to discuss the village of Lightfall, discuss NPCs in Lightfall. Yes. See, we've already got these as done. But I don't think it is done. Because we got way more to discuss with the characters and uh, village of Lightfall. Um, so what I am going to do is move these back here. Because, you know, we need to. So, well, we got a lot of things planned. So, April's nearly over. That's why we've not got much left in April. I don't want to put new tasks in April when the month's nearly done. So, I'm going to say that the rest of this month is going to take us nicely to finishing, you know, the quest and scene. I mean, the dialogue and scene stuff that we've been working on. And a lot of it I'll be doing now off stream because I want to do some of these off stream on stream next week um and then boss mechanics for may will that take us to yeah probably yeah in may the next story so far video is definitely going to be released judging by what we've got here i'm pretty confident the next story so far video will be released in may yes that's next month i'm really excited for it guys um, because it's been a while since the, the, the first story so far was released in, um, in December, I believe. So yeah, been a bit of time. But you know, we've had a lot of content since then. There's a lot to be said in this video. Um, also, so it will happen in Pink Quest 3. Okay, so yeah, I'd say I'd say June for sure for all those. I think we've separated and put them in in a reasonable amount. So I, I, I don't think we've got too much in May at all. I think that's very doable what we've got there. Um, maybe redesign the whole menu makes that a bit more time consuming. So I'm going to put... I'm actually going to change that to start rather than redesign i'll just say start redesigning so we're not going to do all that at once listening to watching you do this makes me want to make my own game now but you make it down at the time help rip me scaly i'd love it if you did i've always people who come here right definitely get the urge to do it too because i've had that people say that a few times there must be something about watching someone make something that definitely is inspiring which is great that's kind of one of my goals i'd absolutely adore to to see more people doing what i do but it's very true it's the time because it's a big commitment like this it's stolen my life i'll be honest but in a good way because I I need this in my life if I didn't have it I don't know I'd be bored <laughs> I need this so um it's definitely the time commitment that's the problem but I'd still say don't let that uh hold you back even if you even if it has to be slow the progress it's still something right Okay, so I'm going to make it a goal to get the first parable build out by either the end of May or the start of June. I want, to, I want another list here. I want to get another list. And I want to call it milestone. I don't know if milestones will be the right term. I need to figure it out. Because I don't think milestones is actually... The word I'm meant to use for this. Dark Knight. Oh my goodness. Thank you for that raid. How are you doing Dark? How was your uh, stream? Were you doing some game dev today? You were. Tell us how that went. How did that go? Hi guys. Who are coming in with Dark? 
Welcome to our nerdy stream. We're working on our Trello page at the moment, people. We're, um, I'm just trying to get organised because I was having some thoughts last night. I was like, I need to get this all planned out a bit, a bit properly. Have an idea what's going to be coming in May and in June, and what we'll be working on. And um, I made that the sort of thing I wanted to do right at the start of today's stream before we jump back into the scene creation stuff. Most ticked off a load of feedback so I can work on design of other stuff. Oh, awesome. Well, I hope it's been productive. I hope it went well. But thank you for bringing uh, your peoples over to me. I'm honoured. <laughs> I'm honoured. Okay, so, yeah, I'm trying to figure out what word to use. Um, important releases maybe should be what i should call it um add list okay so important releases and this will be the last list i think i wish they could all fit on you know my dream would be to for may and to be here and then it can move them all across um yeah, we'll have that there. So important releases, a good emoji for important releases. Probably um, an exclamation mark. A mate exclamation mark emoji. There we go, so what I'm going to just put in here is um, what's coming up and like an estimate date, an estimated date of when certain things are going to be coming. So, story so far, I need to remind myself actually what, one sec folks, I'm, I'm just going on my Twitch page, you see, and I don't want you to all see double rows because that would be haunting. You don't want to see two of me. Here we go. I think we can get it up now. Um, so this is my YouTube page. The story so far, episode one, part one. Okay, so so it'll be episode one, part two, and that will be. Mid May. Can you? Does anyone know if you can bold stuff in Trello? I'll have to Google it myself because I think it looks look better if some bits were bolded, but it probably, probably doesn't. Can you bold in Trello? Uh, Trello uses a modified version of Markdown syntax. It allows you to have bold italics. Oh, it does. That's pretty. That's pretty awesome. Um. Always got to support my fellow game does the more rows the better. Oh, thank you, that's so kind. I hope your weekend goes well, Dark, because it's Friday today. I've still got to answer your DM, Dark. I haven't forgot. I've had like quite a lot of DMs because surprisingly, well, probably not surprisingly, I do. And, um,. I've got to get back to all of you. I'm the worst. Your question that you asked, though, was actually a little bit complicated, but I will, I will let inform you because I feel a bit rude not answering at all. Um, so I'm, I'm actually going to reply to you guys this weekend. Um, my DM, yeah, it was ages ago. <laughs> it was ages ago. Um, and I'm pretty sure it was, yeah, I'm sure it was actually. I'm paranoid now, I've got the wrong dark. I'm gonna look just to make sure. Oh, it might be another dark, because there's two darks. <laughs> 
<laughs> it is it's another dark i thought it was you because I see dark and I think it's you instantly. But then I was like, oh gosh, it's that, it's another. <laughs> when people have the same names, it's so dull. Yes. Well, that's that's good. I'm glad we've cleared that up anyway. Because there's a few DMs and one of them was from dark, but it was actually dark stained uh, angel, not dark night studio. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, dark, the other dark just asked me. A question and I was like, oh gosh that's a, a, a complicated one I have to get back to and I've realized it's been weeks and I'm like oh gosh I didn't reply to dark and then I seen you come in and I was like oh no I, I still got to reply to dark <laughs> and then I've realized it was the, the other dark sometimes that happens we get we get people with similar names uh, come in Okay, so I'm just looking at the syntax for this. I think that I got it. I think this should bold it if I do this. Oh no, it didn't. That's a bit dookie. It said it did. Maybe it doesn't on the free one. Bold Trello not working. <laughs> Maybe it only works in descriptions and not titles. I don't know. Confusing. <laughs> you have like, what the hell? Yeah. I was like, when you said what my DM, I was like, mm could that have been the other dark oh no because that there is two darks that come in and then i realized yes i was like oh no <laughs> will you forgive me dark for getting you mixed up with the other dark i hope so <laughs> um right i don't think that's gonna work unfortunately which is a shame because it will look so much better if it was bolded. Um, we can't put it in description because it doesn't even show up. I think it'll look weird like this. Um, maybe an M dash. Of course, yay! I'm glad. It's always awkward when <laughs> something like that happens. So I'm glad you forgive me. Okay, so. So it's so far, episode one, part one, meet me. Um, I don't know the one, and this will be first playable build. And I'm going to say, end of May, oh hang on, late May, early June. Okay, so that's cool. I'm glad we got that out. Because otherwise I'll forget myself. So. And I think that's everything. I'm just going over everything and making sure there's nothing that is important that I've missed out. If there is anything I've missed out, I'll just, I'll just add it. It's easy enough. So I'm going to make sure that. the the um timer is ticked on the bot for that trello page d 
there we go so guys we're still in april so let's not get too ahead of ourselves yet and uh think about all this silver stuff we're focusing on the scene we're gonna go back to our scene we've been doing and as i said in discord let's remind ourselves it's gonna be the last scene making stream today because i want to kind of do the rest off stream because it'll be cool to just feel like we've been working on that a while now and i kind of want to get some character sheets done on stream and it gives you guys that are waiting for your character sheets to pop in and actually see how me make your characters so that's anyone that's on this list here will be working on them in order um and then after that we'll be doing the boss battle stuff which i'm delaying purposely because it's the hard bit but mainly because I need to do some bit of research into that because there's a couple of mechanical things I need to figure out. And I don't know if uh, by Monday I'll have done that. So there we go. Let's uh, let's uh, go into RPG Maker then. Of course, some stuff has to be a surprise. It's a difficult thing, isn't it, with uh, streaming a game? Because you wouldn't, you sometimes think, oh, all the spoilers, it's, it might ruin things, like having things on stream and revealing all the spoilers. But that's the thing. It's the nature of the project that things will get spoiled, and especially because it's a community game. And if you want to give, like, ideas then you you know every you, a lot of you are gonna know everything that's gonna happen so but that's fun i mean i'll still be people out there that don't come to the streams that will play this game totally blind but i think there's a something fun about having a say in the game as well and being watching the process oh my god jasmine yes getting to those 500 scaly already has quite a lot because scaly used to hang out with us back in the day didn't you didn't you scaly so you you're probably not far from the 500 i see so um but yes we've got how many like there's about a dozen there on this list that are going to be made into characters so you know that's quite a lot but by next week i think we'll have got half of them done because maybe even more but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna get carried away or put too much on myself but I'm, i'll be happy if i've got at least half of these guys done by uh, the end of next week um it all depends on the characters because some people's characters take a bit more editing and uh some of them are quicker to do because they're easier to do and it's basically just the character generator but some people are more ambitious about what they want their character to look like which is totally fine because we want lots of cool characters so um all depends it's hard to say how long they'll take right now um but yeah guys once you do get your 500 raindrops if you have been on the website you'll see that the character forms are on there and it, there's no instruction saying you need 500 raindrops. Unfortunately, some people do fill those forms in even if they haven't got the 500 raindrops. So what I am going to do when I do the next update to the website is move those character forms onto a secret link and I will put that link in the Discord so that people who only have the role of legendary raindrop we'll see what that secret link is it's the only way we can do it i think considering everyone is filling in <laughs> and oh my god converted from a tip twitch prime up to a tier one so thank you scaly i appreciate that you're super kind thank you very much hypo some hypo and I hope you enjoy your look, Dark. Thanks again for the raid. Um, okay. So, guys, I'm going to open RPG Maker now. So, we're going to hide 
our Trello page for a bit. And we're back to where we were last stream now. I have done, done a bit of extra stuff. I've done a bit of tidying up. Um, there's a lot of visual things that have been that have been done. Carol's walk and hop animation has been fixed now as well. Um, the animation of Rose painting, we started that and we ended up with this this is what we was working on so here it is each frame of the animation i don't know why that's gone blank this middle one here that's meant to have the painting on it too there it is <laughs> it was a hidden layer so this is kind of what it ends up as i kind of want to add more detail to it but we're not at the point in the cutscene where it's revealed at this stage. We've, Rose has only literally painted this bit so far before they get interrupted. But when we do get to the post-battle cutscene and we show this, I'm going to do a, do a little bit more detail as well. Maybe show his teeth and just fill him in a bit. This is a bit flat coloured at the moment. But um, Chub Cheeks came up with a really cool idea last stream about this which i'll probably expand on more when we actually work on that part but it's it's really cool and it's exciting and it's it, it just gives more depth to the choices in this game and the outcomes and i'm excited so um and other than that i was doing something else guys that was important you might remember a few streams ago i was having some issues with our fruit avatars they were all pixelated because i enlarged them and unfortunately when you enlarge graphics they look awful they look horrible and i was like oh no what are we gonna do because we need them as avatars but unfortunately because the their graphics are small they looked lost as avatars being so small um so i made them two times bigger but there was pixelate and awful and i was like damn it what are we gonna do but i i thought of a solution and this is what lemon looks like now he looks better than he did the other day put it that way he was really pixelated before i'll, I'll remind you um, okay, not he doesn't have that stuff. There we go. So that's what he looked like before, which you can see it's pretty pixelated. I mean, especially when you look at it at, at its uh, proper size. When it's smaller, you can get away with it a bit, I guess. Um, but this one is much smoother, and um, it's not as blurry. So stuff back and he also has a, a, a slimmer outline as well because this lemon has a really thick black outline which works perfectly for the battle sprites because that's the style but the actual avatars don't have that so it would have looked out of place to have have them otherwise and i did a test of of it in game to see how it looks and it doesn't look too bad so if you're curious to know what my trick is also this is tomato if you're curious to know what my trick is because it's uh, clearly way better than how it looked before it's uh, adobe illustrator that was the answer to our problems basically we're going to do the others now let's do blueberry now and i'll give you an example how this works but you do need illustrator to do it um so i can't remember which one blueberry was so i'm gonna have to open them all so that's apple this is all their battle sprite setups, guys. And as I've said before, ignore the big hammer and big sword because we're not actually using those assets in this particular battle. They were part of the default uh, resources for the original sprite that we base these guys on. 
um, but we decided we, we just want them to be painters because it works better for what we're doing in this battle. Um, so that's apple. This is blueberry. So the the issue was, as I said, they even these these are graphics are absolutely gorgeous, but uh, the issue was with making them larger, which was needed for the avatar because this these were far too small to have as avatars. They were like tiny on the dialogue box, so they looked weird. And when they were made bigger, they were pixelated. So I'm using Illustrator now to to make them bigger and tidy. And there's a little bit of editing involved just to tidy things up because it doesn't look 100% perfect. Um, for example, I'll show you. And they're still not 100% perfect. I still want to like go over them, but I think how they look is definitely better than what we had before. Um, but there's a bit of editing involved. But here we go. So I've copied and pasted him. Let's get Illustrator open. So I don't even have a window capture for it right now. So, um, hi Wes, how are you doing? It's good to see you. How are things going, Wes? Happy Friday. Um, right, guys, I'm just getting a window capture of Illustrator up. So. That is why I'm covered up right now. But here we go. Um, okay, so I'm going to have to obviously make it the size that it fits into our overlay. this will do okay so oh here we go here he is so he's a little bit of a pixelated boy isn't he right now so what we're gonna do guys is we're gonna do this this is the trick so we click low fidelity photo um, color and full tone that's fine I think we need to get rid of the corners and the noise I think that right I'm gonna have to just check something because I do have the settings saved somewhere I print screened them so um, Okay, so this is, I think these are how it should be. It will need a bit of an edit though, because it isn't perfect. Um, it needs to be tidied up, but I like the fact that it does smooth the image somewhat. But it, it does, it isn't perfect, but it's worked well for um, Lemon and Tomato when I did it for them. Um, Blueberry looks a little bit messier than they did though, even on the same settings. Um, going well, got a back of a big piece that I'm going to post for Screenshot Saturday. Pretty hype to share it. Oh, Screenshot Saturday hype. I want to see it. That's for sure. If you want to post it in our Discord, feel free to Wes as well. Hi, Try. How are you doing? Just lurking. How are you doing? And Hinnell. <laughs> you know, I saw your name, Hinnell. And I didn't read the text, but I thought straight away, I bet I know what that says. That's going to mention explosions. And I read it and I was right. I'm a psychic. <laughs> okay. Um, ooh, yay, Tria. We've, um, we've, I've committed to doing some character shoots next week on stream, actually. Just to let you guys know that I've just come in. Um, so some of them we're going to get done, which will be awesome. We've completely updated our Trello page, guys. I've added some extra stuff to it, like important release dates and 
um, I've added the month of May and June and the tasks for May and June for what we're going to do as well. So feel free to have a peep if you'd like to. But right now we go, we're we um, working on our fruit avatars because we need them for the scene. Because currently, well, before in the last stream, the, there, weren't, there weren't any avatars. There were just plain old dialogue boxes with nothing there. And uh, it adds so much to have their avatar with them when they speak. Just like Carol has her avatar and all the other characters. We kind of, we want to make every character have their avatar, you know. We don't want we don't want even the minor NPCs having blank boxes, um, but we, it, it's been a bit tricky because of how pixelated the graphics look for the fruits when enlarged. So for that reason, I'm kind of doing this Illustrator trick because it vectorizes the image and uh, makes it smooth out. But it isn't perfect, I will say, because it. It like does some weird stuff where the face looks a bit deformed in places. But so what I usually do is just drag that in and just do an edit. And I did it. I managed to do it for lemon and um, tomato, and they look half decent now. So we're getting there. Um, so that's lemon, and he looks he looks good in game against the blue background because we have a blue background it's a little bit similar to that although that's a little bit brighter um i'm actually going to do a test play now and then we'll we'll do some of the avatars maybe but i kind of want to do a few things today i want to get some of the dialogue extra dialogue put in as well and uh because this is going to be our last scene stream um I'm going to be doing the rest off stream after today. So. So yay. Do you get analytics of the people who click the link you share in chat? It depends on what page it is, uh, Hinnell. Um, if it's the website, then yes, because I have Google, in, Google Analytics set up for my website. But for Trello and YouTube and um all the external like social media stuff like that i don't um hi eric how you doing it's good to see you hope you're doing well just wondering you showed a document before with loads of character class information specializations is that visible anywhere let me look because i swear we had a command for that um tria i'm gonna have to just have a quick look in my bot um because it's been several, well, a couple of dozen or more streams now since we were, we did that sheet. But I think this is it. Let me put it in. Skyney, oh my goodness. Thank you for those doggo bitties. I appreciate that. That's very kind of you. That's some hype in chat for those bitties, guys. Yay, thank you. You are awesome. Doing okay, just working on video, doing a small bit of animation. He <laughs> he. Oh, what animation are you doing? Thank you for the height, guys. Okay, I believe that this is what you want. Try, try. player skills. So if you click that, it should take you to the Draw.io page. Um, I'm looking myself to make sure because I want to make sure it's the right link. Um, yeah, you'll have to open it in the actual app because the li the way that link sends you, it, it's just, you know, it'll be blurred if you zoom in from that view. But you have to open it in diagrams.net, which is literally just an online app. You don't have to download anything to open that. So once you click open with diagrams.net at the top, you'll see everything will appear. And um, you'll see the list there. And honestly, all that's there is a bunch of classes that we've got planned. Um, the notes that I added for you last time. Um, plus some of the skill tree ideas we've got for our current classes that are in the game. So if you want to have a nosy, feel free to. Thank you. Yay. I, I always turn it off the timer because 
we're not doing it now so i did, don't you have it pop up in chat right now but it was there because at the time i wanted people to see what we was doing and i don't like to delete them just in case you know for example if someone wants to ask in chat like you did today it's always good to have it still there Basically, I don't feel up to being on camera, so I just recorded my voice and I'm making a cartoon of myself over it. Awesome. Well, that sounds like loads of fun. Sounds super fun, Eric. Um, right, so let's do a quick little test play of our scene. exciting times because if you looked at the trello page you'll see that i'm hoping to release the next story sci-fi video in mid-may um there's a, there's already a story sci-fi video so if you guys haven't seen that one yet have a look it's only two minutes long and it's basically me just narrating the very first part of the game that we've already done um and then so the next one will be coming out mid-may hopefully um, it might get extended to late May if I come across problems, but I can see it being in May at some point. And then I'm hoping for a playable build in June, early June maybe. Okay, so here we go. So Carol's hops a little better now. I've changed a, a tiny bits of the dialogue in places. But honestly, guys, like when this scene is done, I will post it in the scene discussion channel and I like to let you guys see it and potentially like give feedback to the scenes. Um, obviously, only small things. Any feedback that is like a redo of the whole scene wouldn't be feasible because I've already spent enough time and it's all been planned and written by the community beforehand. But anything like small little things like, oh, that dialogue is a bit wooden, that bit, that line could just be changed to be made more interesting, then I would totally be up for, for things like that. So that's why there is a scene discussion channel in the Discord, just for for things like that for when the scene's done because you know we want the scene to be good if possible is is that a barrel with a face on it it is it's carol the barrel she's like the mvp of the whole game she's the best she's the best <laughs> we even have um <laughs> we even have an emote she's uh she's the it's a bit emote that one though not a sub one just so peeps now because unfortunately at one point when i made the email someone subbed thinking they were gonna get her but they, <laughs> i was like no it's a bit emo it's a bit emo not a sub emo so um yeah but i love it you know there's so much potential with this character she she could have like an is, is it ex existential i can't say that word ex existential crisis oh my goodness i cannot speak sometimes about her being not not human you know she she's just a uh, a barrel that was brought to life with a magical spell there's law behind it this is the perfect time to to show you guys this video by the way if you happen to be very curious about why there is a living barrel that talks in our game that video is the answer it's some law that we as a community a while ago probably i think back in december actually um discussed and i put it all together in a video so it's about three minutes long and he just talks about the, why the barrels are like this but not just the barrels there's other there's other characters that are objects that shouldn't be alive as well um such as the fruits <laughs> these fruits in the basket here as well so it, it, it's actually relevant to them too <laughs> hi pierre bro how are you doing welcome we don't actually have a commands command but if there's anything you're looking for in particular feel free to ask and i'll i'll show it you 
a joke character who became the soul of the game yeah she she definitely comes across as that like the comic relief and i believe that she st it will will always be that but there's just so much more to her like she 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 carries the main quest right now like it's all focused on her and her past and her family that she's lost um but if you look at the website guys all the other characters are there as well that are barrels and containers because there's a whole range of them not just carol um and there's one with a bra on as well yeah brandon but that's it's the truth hello hi how you doing piero and she's also let me just say this because it's very important she's a romanceable character in our game i'm good it, it's true you can romance a barrel and whether you're a female or a male as well because you in raindrop chronicles you have a custom hero this guy here with the long hair that looks like jesus that's my custom hero but you yours doesn't necessarily have to look like that you can make them look however you want um and um you can give them their own name as well you can choose whether you want them to be a boy or a girl so you can romance carol even if you have a girl character so because i don't think you know carol's sexuality is quite fluid she's kind of just discovering herself like and her like existence so she's just happy to be loved but she's very very hesitant to show that side of her she's very aggressive and hostile as you probably notice she gets a very very much like that she's the she's the typical sudden diatrope that's kind of what i'm basing her on being so uh she, yes she is an angry lady but she has that she has a soft heart inside she wants she does want them to be loved really but she she just hesitates to show it especially with people she doesn't know that well exactly she really did become the soul of the gab so far at least yeah and it's still very early days like it's very clear right now she's key to the game even at this point but it's still very early days in terms of what people realize about carol there's just so many potential themes to explore as well not just with carol but the other barrels too and I say barrels, but there's also a box and a cookie jar in that uh, group of companions. So, yep, they're a wacky lot. They're a wacky bunch of characters, but I like that. I think that, that gives the game a certain charm. But as you can see, Lemon has an avatar now. Um, he didn't before, and I've also added his name box. <laughs> blueberry is gonna speak as well but blueberry plum and apple don't have their avatars yeah i've still got to do theirs okay so that's where we got up to um and now I'm just thinking, shall we spend some of the stream doing their avatar or shall we add the next part of the dialogue to the scene? Because I'm happy doing either. Um, I'm okay. I'm happy to do some more scene stuff for a bit. Um, so, we've got draw IO up. So this is the point we're at. So we have a choice now in the dialogue we're at. So one gives you a compassion point and one makes you lose a compassion point. And this is this is a big deal. It, the, the way you shape your hero 
Um, you can either gain or lose points in compassion, bravery or wisdom, by the way. And that's kind of what, we, the, what we've based it on those three traits. Um, and the way you shape your character with your choices is going to affect everything. Like the quests that are available to you, the way the NPCs talk to you that you meet, um, the way, just the way you're treated. And you say, for example, if you're a hard ass that's got no, that's really had no compassion throughout the game with the things you've said, you are more likely to probably get approached by, you know, evil, questionable factions to do some sort of side quests in the game that might that won't be available if you were a good guy, say, or a compassionate person. So it's pretty interesting, and it allows for some replayability as well and um same for romance in some of the characters i mean that one i felt was worthy of a carol romance point because that decision shows that the hero is thinking about carol and the fact that carol needs rose right now because of the painting which you, some of you guys if you're new here or you're not sure what's happened story-wise might be a bit confused by what's actually happening with this painting business at the moment but it will all be clear when I release the story so far video because yes there's a bit of a story there that's for sure hi Rex how are you doing thanks for stopping in how, how are you today doing good Rex we've been updated our Trello page today spent quite a bit of time getting the to-do list for may and june and adding an important releases list as well and some planned dates so so guys i'm going to put my trello link in again in case you want to have a browse so this is kind of the goal for the next couple of months guys um rest of the month we've not only got a bit of april left haven't we now um but it's all going to be about finishing the scene work and then when may begins we'll be getting into doing the boss mechanics again and doing some tidying up for the menus the ui and the mapping because another goal will be to release a playable build so for that reason i want everything to be tidy and connected and working properly so um and then in june um everything's going to get exciting by june because that will be when we start talking about side quests and brainstorming ideas and thinking about what will happen next in the plot as well and um when you guys have watched the second story so far video when that does get released it will help you come up with some potential ideas for the third main quest as well because it's i i certainly think it's hard to if you especially if you're new here and you don't know about what's happening in the game at all then it's hard to like brainstorm with us about ideas but that is a hundred percent why i'm doing the story so far series because it's gonna help people catch up with the plot and stuff that's exciting yeah i'm excited too so i'm glad i've done this because it just knowing what's ahead and planning helps a bunch and doesn't mean i have to like do it rigidly like if i go a bit off and i don't meet the deadline i'm not going to punish myself because that that won't be good but it's nice to have it there because it's good to see and it's a good guide but how are you doing rex and thank you wonder mustard for the follow i'm not sure whether i thanked you i appreciate that so so welcome guys so yes dialogue stuff is what we're doing which as you can see here we've got our scene up and we're working on it i'm gonna just i'm gonna spend the rest of the stream probably just adding more dialogue because if we look at this is our uh, this is our dialogue plan we always write our dialogue in this little program before we jump into the scene creation and as you can see it's all here and um we got a lot to add so we've got a lot to add to this scene which is why i'm going to be doing a lot of it off stream next week because it'll it'll help a lot to do to finish this off stream and i'll be spending be spending the actual streams doing some character sheets because i think that'll be fun and chill okay so this is where we are we've got the choice now so let's add that in right so in the past when we've done choices 
I'm gonna go to another scene. This is usually how we set them up. I always copy and paste previous ones. Yeah, so usually I add a comment saying plus one Carol Romance point or plus one Compassion point. Um, just so I know that that's what the player gets. Because we haven't actually set up the system yet. But that will just be helpful to, for when we do set it up to know. Um, if you weren't streaming the development of this game, would you still do a Discord? I'm trying to decide if I should make a server for my game. Oh, 100% um, worse. I think if I wasn't streaming this, I would... I would think of another way to build a community and Discord would be a good way to do that. Um, but it, it doesn't necessarily have to just be Discord. I think things like Instagram and YouTube and even Twitter um, could help a lot for discoverability and things. I just mainly use Twitch for that for me. And I'd love to put more time into other platforms as well, but it's very hard to do that when you're making a game at the same time. Um, so I generally just use Twitch for my discoverability. But I've been thinking about using Instagram more, which was a bit... I had some issues with Instagram at first with this project because I tended to get a lot of um, unsolicited feedback on there. And I disabled my comments because they weren't the nicest comments either. <laughs> and um, I ended up disabling my comments because of it. And I ended up just completely neglecting the whole platform because of that. Well, not really because of that. It's because of time. But that, I think, didn't help. Um, but I'm thinking of going back to it and enabling the comments, but using it in a different way. Um, because I think the way I used it probably, and the way I worded the captions and what I posted, probably made people think that it was okay to comment saying those things. Um, because I like, advertised it was a community game and I was like, oh, so what do you think? You know what I mean? And if you do that, then people are more likely going to say the thing but what i really wanted was for people to find me on instagram and come in the stream and give feedback rather than give the feedback on instagram because it's all about doing it on twitch you know that's the point and the feedback was given when everything was done so it was like no that that's done now <laughs> yeah i do twitter and insta but i didn't know if people would be interested in joining a discord for the game women also get way more unsolicited feedback online yeah i think like being a woman in game dev is always hard as well because it it's almost like you're gonna get judged that it's a sad thing and it shouldn't exist, especially in this day and age. But there's no denying that it does. Um, that's for sure. But uh, it's just one of those things that are going to happen when you're a person online and sharing your work as well in general. Um, and that goes for any creative. Not even just game devs, but artists in general. It's something that they probably get so often. And it's... it. it I mean sometimes it's great like especially when it's asked like if i'm like oh guys so what do you think about this bit what should we do now like anyone got any ideas when i welcome it i i'm totally wanting that feedback then but when something has been done and dusted and you think that part of the game's done now and complete i'm moving on to something else now and you're getting unsolicited feedback on those but you're like it can be a bit overwhelming because you think oh gosh well that's done and we've already decided that and i think it's worse coming from strangers as well because they've got nothing to do with the project and you've never heard you've never spoke to them in your life before and yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit of a, uh, an irritating one, that's for sure. But, um, but yes, it happens. It's, it's unavoidable. It's just you gotta get tough skin in this industry. That's what it comes down to, and uh, not let things get to you. 
Do you follow Freya Homie? Her replies on Twitter are stuff with reply guys despite being a dev on budget cuts and shade a forge lol. Oh my god, I'll look it I'll have a little look into I don't follow her now. But um but yeah, so I'll I'll look because I'm curious now. And um for sure. So I'll make a note of her name, Captain Wes. But yeah, it's um it's difficult being a woman, that's for sure. Um for me, like I I had someone come in stream last stream and said I I look their comment was I love women who code and I actually banned that person. And some people now might not ban somebody like that because what they actually said wasn't insulting it was actually a compliment i guess and that person thought it was a compliment but for me it's not a compliment because it's uncomfortable to be like talked your gender to be brought up like that and to be objectified so i i'm gonna ban anything that makes me uncomfortable i think that's the best way to avoid toxicity I think if you start welcoming things that make you feel uncomfortable, it'll come and it'll keep coming and coming. And then you'll have it and you will get overwhelmed by it because it's everywhere. So I just try to stop it as soon as I see it, you know. So that's kind of how I handled that situation. And uh, and yeah, it's um, just one of those things that happen now and again. Just happens. But luckily, I'm happy to say that most people are lovely that do come by okay so i copied that choice so oh no i didn't copy that choice Let's go back and do it again. There we go. So I'm just going to use that text choice as a good template for what we're going to add. So we're going to obviously change the text to what's in our document here. Okay, so we'll put the comment in um, plus one Carol Romance point. And this one's going to be minus one compassion. So that will just help a bunch when we finally do implement the um, feature. And it's something easy enough to do, like it can just be done with variables. But we haven't really decided yet whether it's going to be something that's just happening behind the scenes. Or whether it's actually going to be something that's visible in the menu that you can review about yourself. That's something that's still open for consideration. The romance system in itself will not be unlockable anyway until we've met the um, Otsuyu character made by Kindle Trash because she runs the brothel and it's she's the opportunity to unlock that feature in the game. It felt appropriate and Kindle sort of requested that. She was like, I want my kind of my character to be the one that unlocks the romance system. So that's what's gonna happen. And it fits. I was like, makes sense because the moment we meet the brothel character, it fits. 
it's it's got relevance at that point um okay so now carol speaks first by for these times but she says different things based on which choice you pick And I think that's how you do italics. I'm gonna double check because I sometimes forget the code. F I F R, yes. That's it. So the first one's yes, we are, we need her. And the other ones, no, they aren't. We need her. a very very slight change of dialogue there but one of them you've kind of like done what carol don't or doesn't want and in the first you've done what she does want but ultimately this part doesn't so far it doesn't affect things too greatly because the outcome's still the same but it probably could affect you know how carol views you and how other npcs are going to view you know just this small little thing and of course it only is one point that you're gaining or losing with this but those points build up over time and the lost over time and over the time as you're having more darling dog dialogue interactions and choices like this those points will affect things one one single point might not but when you've eventually got 10 plus 10 compassion or minus 10 compassion then things might start being different Right guys, so I'm gonna have a quick BRB because I have been having so much water <laughs> that I need to go to the potty. Eh? Um, so I'll be back in a couple of minutes guys and then we'll carry on putting in this dialogue and talking through the scene. Um, don't go anywhere, feel free to ask any questions, double chat while I've gone and I'll see you soon. Hello 
I'm back. Hello. Okay, so what is next? Let's have a peep at our document. Right, so we have a reaction from Rose. Okay, so what happens now is linear. We've had the choice, but it doesn't matter what Carol says, everything's going to be linear now, which is why I said that the outcome's the same, really, and nothing really. It doesn't change it dramatically, but it will as those points build up over time. Because there'll be a lot of little choices like that. They'll, they won't affect the outcome of the dialogue greatly, but they will rack up those points or make you lose those points that might affect how the envies and how the world is shaped around you based on the person you are. Um, but this particular bit here, we get another choice coming up very soon in a few boxes time. And this one is definitely, this one changes the dialogue and different things get said based on which one you pick. But then eventually it does go back into a singular linear dialogue scene after that. But you know, th different things will be revealed to you, different dialogue lines and different backstories of each of the fruits based on, based on which one you pick here. Um, welcome back. Thank you, Rex. I appreciate that. Um, but Rose is going to be happy here. I thought this would be a nice little touch um, because she feels needed. But then Carol's like, oh, for, like, because she's embarrassed. Carol doesn't like affection. <laughs> she, if someone's going to be thinking she's being nice, she automatically goes into defense mode. And she's like, no, screw you. I'm not being nice ignore me and goes back to being hostile again um so she says that i wasn't sure about the word buffoon i mean it's not the worst word it was kind of the first word that came to my mind for an insult but i'm open to suggestions for another word that could always replace buffoon which is why i put these boxes here um so yeah, Carol cringes at the thought of sharing an affection moment with Rose. The dialogue here needs to show that. So we'll do that bit now. Um, and this is going to be straightforward enough. We've got to just make Rose smile. And the way I like to do it with Rose is because she's a mute character. Is I like to change her sprite rather than have show her face um, smiling. Because we don't really have many. We don't really have that acute face of Rose Smiley. Most of us are cre the creepy, creepy vampire <laughs> face sets. I don't think there's many. I'm going to have a little peek. But, you know, she's a mute, so she, all she'd ever say anyway in a dollar box is dot, 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 or she'd make an animal sound. So there's not much, like, there's not much we can do there. So I've kind of made a habit of putting a lot of expressions in her sprites. So... Here is, here's what we've got. So we've got sad ones, angry ones. That's a happy one. And then we've got a sort of shocked one there. But I wasn't sure about that shocked one. There's another shocked one I think I like more. And I think we could use this happy one, but we've got to do it from the face down view, which we didn't add yet. So we're going to have a look at the faces we've got and and do them. I think, I personally think that this shocked one might be better. At the top, the one where it shows the teeth, but I don't know because she's a vampire. She doesn't have, her teeth aren't like that, I suppose. Hmm. But we'll think about the happy face for now because that's the bit we're focusing on. But there's a point in this scene where she does have a shocked face. Um. That's a happy face. I mean, yeah, she's a vampire, but it's not like, you know, 
pretty hard with the room you've got with the sprite to do vampire teeth, but you never know. Um, that's that is the happy face was doing before. We'll see how that looks. It might look like she's just got her eyes closed, but. But I think when the eyes are that shape, it's meant to signify happiness. That one now is meant to be like sleepy. That's angry. That's sort of just normal eyes closed and that's like happy eyes. Um, but we could always combine it with the teeth. And then, yeah, so I'm going to just add this bit first. So when I edit the face expression on the characters we've got, I tend to just delete the bits that we don't need. Like, as you can see, I've deleted the bits that covered her bangs and the bit that covered her scar. Um, so that I'm only actually covering up what will be edited, basically. Um, so that's... That's really it. So what we did now is we just changed the colour and that just makes the job, our job easier and we're not changing the colour as much of, um, of too much area. So... Rose is super pale so she, she has a much paler skin tone than the default. Oops, no, that wasn't the right colour. <laughs> um, what's that one? Hey, where's it done that? You know what it is? I'm on a non point sample, that's why, with my colour picker. There we go. Right, so that, that's it. And um, I mean, I think we could uh, make her look happier than that. Because like you say, she, she just looks like she's got her eyes closed. We could give a bit of a mouth, happy mouth, which we, which we have here. And you know she's a vampire, so we we gotta see what we can do with the mouth, make it more vampirish if we can. Um, we'll see, because there's not much you can edit in like what a few sprites, a few pixels. Sorry, but we'll we'll see. Um, 
So I just think putting the darker colour there works better and just makes the mouth stand out a bit more. Honestly, I don't think, even though I'm like really tempted to add some vampire thang fangs, I think it could potentially just not look right with the amount of space we've got available. So I think that's fine. So we'll just merge those and we'll put it on the other two as well. She's smiling like a buffoon, according to Carol. I mean, I'm kind of interested in looking up some words that could be other alternatives for buffoon. Okay, so that just needs saving now. And hi Van, how are you doing? Good to see you Van. How are things? Happy Friday, Van. Nincompoop. <laughs> Nincompoop is a really good one. I can't imagine Carol saying that. I don't know, but I could imagine some characters saying that. That's for sure. Like the more, the more, um, the more likable type. Not saying that Carol's not likable. She she has her charm, but. <laughs> You know, she's meant to be that character, you know, that my girl with Carol, like, she's got to be endearing in her, in her own way, but she's, she's a, she's a funny and Hmm. I accidentally clicked on a sprite. I'm going to have to save it again. So I save that as a PNG and it'll look right. Now we can put the new expression of Rose for this cutscene. We'll see as well how it looks when we do a test play. Hi Alex, how are you doing? It's good to see you again. Doofus. Doofus is great as well. I love your like silly insult words, Rex. They're amazing. Carol's like, it, I think it's just a struggle with Carol because she's such a sundier. She's such a, she's like very different to how I am. So getting in the mind of characters that aren't, of your like you in nature you know because i'm sweet and carol's mean it's uh, it can be hard to think of the words then but um baked bread yesterday it was wonderful oh sounds yummy was it really nice and yummy bread fresh bread usually is hi how's the game going what's the reason behind the barrel and box characters Honestly, like it was just random. Like we were talking about ideas together and we were like thinking of how the game could start. And it was like, we got onto the idea that the hero would be a stowaway in a barrel at the start of the game when he arrived in like fall. That was actually the option that won the poll. And um, everything just got crazy from there, like in a barrel. And then it ended up sounding like that that barrel could talk and 
were like, yeah, actually, I really like the idea of a talking barrel. And it was just so wacky and crazy that we just went with it. And I started making the avatar and the sprite. And we just really, everybody got obsessed with the barrel. And everything just went from there. There was a whole community of them after that. And we did decide, obviously, we don't want things to be completely random and make no sense in our game. So we did build some lore for those characters so if you are interested in learning that law it's there and um we thought together quite a while ago a few months back now of the story behind the containers and why they're actually alive and that video basically explains it so if you're interested there you go clod idiot simple turn they're great and in fact to read that red what a culture of red you know rex What's going on? It's as bad as moon shadow and lemon when I call them moon shadow and lemon. Oh my god. Well, we haven't even got a red in this game, so I can't blame that. I, I just say it's because <laughs> I don't know. But I like those ones because there's something very they're just more insulting and less silly because although Carol's a comic relief character, I don't think she's got the charm to be like a tip a silly character that would say things like nink and poop and she's more sim she's more like it's hard to put the words right but you know she's just very straightforward and harsh with the way she insults i guess so um i like those three great in fact i really like hang on what is the actual dialogue she says i'm gonna get it up stop smiling like a buffoon stop smiling like a sim button stop smiling like an idiot stop smiling like a clod idiot idiot is such a like obvious one and overused but it actually works having idiot there i'm just gonna get it up again clod and sim button are great but you know when it comes to dialogue they've got to have that it's got to have that ring to it in the actual sentence um so stop smiling like a buffoon stop smiling like a clod stop smiling like an idiot stop smiling like a simpleton you know it's like which one works the best idiot kind of does for me but you know maybe maybe others have different opinions i like idiots nimrod is good too yeah see you can get so creative with fictional well not always fictional some of these insults are actually existing words too and um, i kind of want a combination in our game of fictional insults and like charming real insults that are you know not offensive or anything um but but yes sometimes you can think of oh like think that's such a unique insult i love that word it's so underused and then you see one like idiot which is like overused but it, in a certain sentence you think actually the obvious and common one works best like sometimes you want a real fancy and think i want to use nink and poop i want to use like all these really cute charming insults but it doesn't have that ring to it like the obvious insult does sometimes let's get them all in guys because it's always good to consider as many as possible so thank you rex and and uh where's as well nimrod so we got nimrod Cottage cheese dill bread came out crusty on the outside and moist on the inside. Perfect. Sounds gorgeous. I, w I wish I could have some. Full. Half wit. Dunce. Dalt. Moron. Nene. I love it. See? Rex is, you can always rely on Rex when it comes to um, nicknames and like little fun, funny words. I always can rely on you for that. I like full he dork. Yeah, dork's good. And you know what's, what's interesting here? I mean, there's so many good words that you've just listed in a few minutes, guys. But 
some some characters some of these words would be specific to certain characters i i think when it comes to characters assigning characters with certain insults helps give them a very distinct personality and rather than if you made them potentially say any insult word so if say like carol could be the one that commonly uses say just for example dork or if fall they could be carol's words and then another character in the game i can't think right now but there could be another one later on that says the one word half wit or says the word uh, nina you know but like as soon as you make carol say other words it kind of takes away that that distinct memorable like words from them so yeah it's like I'm going to use Animal Crosses, Crossing as an example because I noticed that with this game <laughs> that every villager uses a word to talk to you like the one I have, um, Biff, he's a hippo, he calls me Squirt and he always calls me Squirt all the time and I think there's like a charm about that and I think all the other villagers call you like certain words as well. And it's always a different word based on who the villager is. So it's things like that I think are really cool. So I think it'd be really good here if we decide which word is best for Carol. Well, which two or three words from here would be best for Carol. And then depending on the context of the insult and the sentence, pick one of those three words that she regularly uses. And then when we when we start to write dialogue for another character later on we can look at this list again and think oh that the word ninny will be really good for them or something you know what i mean and it all depends on their personality but let's get them all in because you, you guys are coming up with more which is great and the more choice the better because more options um loon is a good one as well Dog-faced pony soldier. Dog-faced is uh, interesting. I mean, it doesn't even have to be dog. You could stick another creature in there and call them faced something, you know. Pony soldier. <laughs> I do like dog-faced. Ding dingus. Um, Pratt. If Carol is a barrel, shouldn't her curse words be related to what other natural enemies barrels have? Sacks, I don't know. That's a very good point, Alex. And funnily enough, we've kind of gone that direction with her too. She actually calls humans flesh bags. That's kind of her, as she said it in this scene, I think she has somewhere. She calls Cat, um, Rosa Cruncher a lot. But that's kind of a specific vampire themed insult for a lot, not just Carol, but other people in the world as well. It's kind of a slur for vampires. Um, she says, she's, I think it's here actually, she says, look, I don't trust flesh bags either, but this one wasn't the one that ate your mother and brother. So she uses flesh bag a lot to, when she's talking about a human. And it's because she's made out of wood, she... You know, she sees anything that isn't made out of wood as a flesh bag, especially a human. Because um, they are, we're made out of flesh and we're a bag of flesh, to put it bluntly. It's quite gross when you think about it, isn't it, that we're just bags of flesh. I think I want to be a barrel instead. I think that would be cool. So, for example, we've kind of gone with it there. We've also, we use insults like son of a bucket, like... What was another one we've used? There's been a few like wood themed or container themed um, words. We'd have to go back into our previous scenes to remind ourselves of those dialogues. But yes, it, it's always a good thing to make the type of character they are, like what they are, where they're from, have themed insults based on that. I mean, does it mean we shouldn't use the simple insults either? Because like I say, sometimes using simple insults actually has a better flow to the dialogue than something that's more themed and more unique and interesting. So it all depends on the context of what it is and the, the way the sentence is constructed, um, which insult is the best one to go with. Um, mutton head. <laughs> I, I always like insults that end in the word head. 
it's, it's it, there's just something about it stop smiling like a christmas child I, that i really think that's a really interesting one rex really unique my only issue is do we even have christmas in the world of raindrop chronicles there's things like law that could be filled in that we haven't decided yet and it just that makes me think oh what could christmas be called in our world like we haven't even decided that yet because we could give it a christmas a complete new name that is specific just to the raindrop chronicles world and if if sometimes like in dialogue law related phrases like that are used people will be like oh what well, i wonder what that word means ah that that means christmas like sometimes it's always good to make it obvious that it's christmas um i know in the uh in a series of books that i read they called halloween reap or something but it's pretty obvious that reap is halloween you know you don't think hang on what seasons ha reap what holidays reap it like the way the word sounds and the associations that word automatically make me think that's halloween and i always think it's like interesting to give like different fictional words to sort of seasons and festivals and holidays like that as well just to make your world feel more unique um <laughs> woodless oh my goodness well we're going to be careful with actual like swear words in our game um so <laughs> i think it's brilliant scary thing. but I, I try and keep it pg when it comes to swear words and obviously things like prat and dork and uh, are, are fine to use but um i'd really like woodless as an insult or some woodless something you know woodless if it has a, a ring to it <laughs> it's that one but but yeah um i'm sure there's other combinations we can think of too did christ exist in raindrop chronicles yeah that's what i mean it's like you, these things we don't even know because a lot of the law has been unwritten because we writers we go on with this story whenever there's a relevant moment to discuss and develop law we will um like for example now just it being brought up christmas has made me think oh what could we call christmas in our game but it doesn't even have to be christmas the same way that we celebrate it on planet earth it could be like their version of christmas maybe there's a complete different like history behind why they celebrate christmas and um they give gifts there's a time of year that perhaps they give gifts to each other but it's for a completely different reason than it would be on planet earth you know i think that would be pretty cool fathead <laughs> poot liquor i imagine like someone a child saying those ones and it's worth putting them down even though they seem silly just because uh just because you never know there could be the perfect character for that and it doesn't fit carol but you know someone it might um maybe you should do something like stop smiling like you're on vacation yeah that's a good one as well van sometimes using like similes and all that sort of thing and metaphors can be good as well rather than a straight out insult um but I, I, I think that's a good one. I think it's worth adding, just making a note of that. Um, just in case we decide to go with something like that. So, so yeah, like using the word like in front of like something is always, can always be effective. And see, yeah, it's like, I think like Rex mentioning the like with the like a Christmas child has brought in the idea of using a description. So, I'm going to put Christmas child as well, but I'm actually going to put a question mark after Christmas because like we said, we might want to give Christmas another word in our world. We haven't even thought of the name of the world yet in Round Drop Chronicles, and it certainly will have a world name. There'll be a name of the continents, each of the continents, and um, 
well, regions, should I say. I mean, we're in Everbloom Forest, but there could be an area that actually is a, a bigger region. Everbloom Forest just is part of a region. Part of me? Oh my goodness. And um, the world itself, I would really like to eventually name as well and give a name. Episode 1 will have its own title as well, by the way, guys. I mean, I don't want to just call it Raindrop Chronicles Episode 1. When it comes out, I want, to ha ha I want it to have a subtitle. A bit like how Zelda games do it. Or, you know, expansions like for two MMOs. They always give their games a subtitle after the main name. And I think it'd be cool if we, if you know, eventually come up with some names related to what happens in episode one or the sort of feel or mood or, you know, uh, the foresty themed area of episode one. It, it could be named after something to do with that. Um, and stop smiling like a child on the winter gift exchange <laughs> extravaganza yeah so it could even be called that like it's a bit of a tongue like a bit long and wordy but we, we i think we could come up with something stop smiling like a kid in a candy store i'm gonna put them all in And it's a difficult one, you know, I to think, oh, what should we call seasons? Like, there's a lot of thought that has to be put in. But it's not seasons, it's fest, like, holidays, festives and that. Um, even seasons could have their own name in this. You could go all out. I mean, look how Skyrim do it. They give each of the months um, a different name. Some of them are really nice and pretty. I know that my month in Skyrim is the worst name. I think it's just mid-year or something mine is. I'm like, why did I have to get the boring month name? Um, okay, so I can't spell extravagance. <laughs> Let's get Let me try. There we go. Stop smiling like a kid in a candy store. Raindrop Chronicles and the Prisoner of Agabar. J.K. Rowling, will, she'll sue me. My goodness. <laughs> but I think we could come up with some cool. I can imagine us over time coming up with some really cool names for episode one. And I'll probably put, up a poll, put a poll up and see which one tops it and gets the most votes. But if it was linked to the forest enchanted theme because it's all kind of got that here. Or it could be linked to some kind of important side quest or even main quest that's in the game specifically. Um, it could even be named after Carol, <laughs> but probably not, because she's she's uh, going to be key in all episodes, not just this one. But yeah, something specific to what happens in episode one will be a great subtitle for, for episode one. Um, but thank you so much for your suggestions, guys. It's... It's an interesting one, like I adore the Christmas ones and I, I adore like just the idea of bringing in law in phrases, in dialogue, but because we haven't decided right now what that festival is going to be called, it makes it difficult to, to decide to go with that one. Um, even vacation would vacation be what we call holidays here i'm going all out here guys i like to consider everything even that could have another name um you know i like a literature yeah i agree scaly that's why i said your idea actually was a great insult even though it was a swear because it it the double two w's together just had a really good ring to them and woodless idiot or woodless fall or woodless more and it doesn't have it it works but it doesn't have that ring to it like the the other one did so this weirdo I like it and I'll just put that there because you never know there could be others <laughs> you know it's funny I 
could actually imagine Carol swearing with that other word, but I'm just, I've made a promise to myself to try and keep it swear free um, and only have fictional or mild swear words. <laughs> Stop smiling like a big fat bet wedding doody head. Yeah, I imagine so someone saying that, but not Carol. <laughs> Can you imagine? Carol said that <laughs> but um right so I'm looking at the I'm looking at our insults again and thinking which ones could fit Carol best obviously the wood what woodless ones would because it's wood themed so they would for sure but like the generics the generic insults I'm at because buffoon was just the first one that came to me but i always was never happy with it i was always like i don't know if buffoon is is working for me with carol i never felt like it suited her although the word itself has a charm to it i never i never felt like it would it fit carol so i personally I mean, I'm putting a star by the ones I can imagine a saying, but you guys might have a different opinion and feel like she could easily say the word moron. Um, she could, she totally could. I mean, ones like Nini are, are great. I like Nini, but not for Carol. I imagine someone much cuter and sweet saying the word Nini. And buffoon, I, I just imagine someone more like of a snob saying that. I don't know. <laughs> Poorly care. Okay. Um, but it's interesting. I want to keep this list forever anyway, just for when we have other characters. Like when, when we start developing and introducing other characters, I'll probably bring this box and be like, okay, so what insults would this character use? Um, I'm going to just actually, because we do have the other scenes and I'm going to open them and I want to remind myself the way Carol spoke in previous scenes because consistency is good. And if she has used, okay, so she says the word gross a lot. Well, she not a lot, but she's, gross was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to make it a thing to have a box with character phrases in, common character phrases for each of the characters, each of the ma ma main characters that have you know, a decent bit of dialogue. I'm gonna do that just so I can remember and there's a rep we can have reference to it because like I, I don't wanna have to keep checking Carol's dialogue 24 seven to remind myself of her common, her common uh, phrases. So I'm gonna say Carol the barrel. Carol the barrel, common words and phrases and I'm gonna look through because luckily we're still pretty much early on we've only we're on only we're only on main quest two at the moment so we're still early on enough to not have this be too big a job for us to go through all the dialogue and it's better to be consistent early you know so we can keep in character so gross I 
and of course sometimes you might only size some of these once or twice but if there's ever like a time where you know something happens and it's appropriate for it to say again it's makes sense for it to stick with the simps have that, that consistency um so she said get out there's already a get out there again so she's um the get out thing has already appeared twice um flesh bag obviously these are insult for humans. She said, wait up. And I've even put here, insert barrel curse word exclamation, because I hadn't actually thought of a good one, so I've still not got one in. But now we've come up with some really cool insults. There could be a one we could put in. Well, it doesn't even have to be an insult, it could be an explanation. An, explana an exclamation probably fits better like that, like son of a bucket is an exclamation or you know um holy holy buckets but we don't want to have hot buckets all the time do we common words phrases and exclamation we'll put common words phrases exclamations um and curse words well insults oh gosh what <laughs> insults and curse words hi miss rise and chub how are you doing guys it's good to see you how are things going at the moment we've we've been just building more on our scene today because this is going to be the last stream that we work on the scene because i'm going to be doing the rest off stream um, we're going to be doing character sheets next week because we've got all these to do, guys. We've updated the Trello page within five. So we've got all these character sheets to do and I'm going to get some of those done next week. It'll be a chill week next week. And then the week after that, we're going to jump into battle stuff because that's the goal for me. So I do actually do have my Trello page here. If, that's, if you want to have a nosy about what this new schedule is, um, have a feel free to have a browse i've added an, an important releases list as well for estimated dates um but we've been just working on the scene and we're at the point where we're thinking of uh you know we the stop smiling like a buffoon line for to rose when she smiles at the fact that carol needs her it never sat well with me as a word that Carol would use. So for that reason, I've kind of encouraged chat to come up with some insult words and just general insult words. And I'm putting a star next to the ones I feel Carol would likely say. Because these insult words, some of them, even if they're not appropriate for Carol, they'll be great for other characters, you know, like giving characters their own, like like specific words will help give them more personality and make them distinct from each other give them their i've always like i go crazy don't i about character voices and them having their own voice and that helps um so i'm i've decided i'm gonna give a box i'm gonna make a box for every main character that has their common words phrases exclamation marks it marks exclamations <laughs> insults and curse words in it and i'm going through all the previous dialogue to make a list of that so get out gross flesh bag um wait up might as well because she said that it's worth putting there um Because this is just to be easier. Once I've got this card of all Carol's common words, I don't have to keep looking through all the dialogue to remind myself of what her common phrases and how she speaks and the tone of voice is. It's just going to be keep things a bit more organised. Just be careful not to slide into ableism. That could be become a mess real fast. How do you mean, Yasmin? I'm always curious at how to avoid things becoming a mess. It's always interesting to hear different points of views. Um, I 
that I think, I think what you mean now um in terms of like being in too insulting to people and that's why I kind of like say keep things fictional as much as possible and not have anything like that's a real slur word or anything too derogatory in there you know it's always going to be it's always going to be something that's fictional and charming as much as possible you know what i mean um my internet has gone super slow i've been forced to 160p and i only get to see a blur rose oh no city internet chub just try to keep it fictional yeah for sure but that's what you guys are here for like if we've ever got anything on our list and someone is offended by a certain word just say just say i don't like that word and it would you know if someone this is why it's a community thing because it's you know everybody gets to have their say while we're working on it um we don't want to put in anything in the game that's going to cause um political contra controversy or anything like that that would be bad and I, I've, I've said it plenty. I'm, I can be naive. Like sometimes, like if say a person a troll comes in the stream and they say a word, or even if someone isn't a troll and comes in the stream and says something like, I sometimes I don't know if something's a bad word. I can be a bit ignorant to it. I remember once I said I forgot what the word was now. It was a really silly word, but I was like, oh my God, is that word offensive? And chat was like, no, Rose, it's fine. That's not an offensive word. But I was like really paranoid it was. I was like, oh my God, what if that's an offensive word? Um, some words are not offensive. And just because someone is offended by a word doesn't mean it should be off limits. The words on the screen are fine. I'm not sure what word to be worried about being. Yeah, that's why I'm saying like if Yasmin has seen a word and you've actually thought actually that could be disrespectful to a certain a group of people, then I'm not going to get salty at you pointing that out because I'd rather be aware and be told, you know, like I say, I know that sometimes I don't know. Like I said, I, I forgot what that word was now. I know there's a clip. There's a clip of it. And I wish I had it because it was quite funny. It, was, it wasn't it was dookie or doofus, but it was something along those lines. It was just a very silly word that I said. And I was like, oh, God, I, I, I chat, is that a bad word? <laughs> but chat was like, no, robes, it's not a bad word. But I get so worried about being accidentally, like, disrespectful. Because if I ever was, it would always be an accident <laughs> because I'm too nice to be like that. Um, if Rose is undead, maybe she could be called a used flesh bag. Yeah, or a used cruncher. Like, crunch is vampire, but yeah, you used that's interesting thinking of undead as well i mean we don't have undead in raindrop chronicles yet but i'm sure there'll be some words for that as well if there was a <laughs> used flesh bag gross a rotten flesh bag that sounds gross as well stinking flesh bag rotten flesh bag i could imagine carol saying that the more descriptive the more like Carol-like. Um, right, so I think that's it with the Carol dialogue. But there's more Carol dialogue down here, so I'm just going to look through. Oi is one. How could I forget oi? Listen up is another. Because these, those sort of things like listen up and wait up, they're like the way, you know, you want people, you're trying to get attention with those sort of words. And some people approach that differently. Shy people who aren't like Carol would be more like, um, excuse me, or like, try and get attention in a more modest way but carol would just be like oi wait up or oi listen up like she's far more aggressive 
with how she like tries to talk and communicate with people but not everybody is going to be like that carol is one on her own <laughs> or one of very few that would speak like that um and it, it's i want to make sure that i don't make other characters speak in the way carol would because it takes away her uniqueness and distinct personality um Oh Hush is one. She's used Oh Hush when she was embarrassed. She kind of is a bit like um uh sometimes as well when you catch her by surprise. Because she although she comes across as very like outgoing, I guess, and loud, she gets awkward, especially when someone flirts with her. Or, or just say something that she totally isn't going to expect them to say. Carol can get awkward then. Blush. I need to make a blush avatar for her as well for those moments. Um, then I won't mention it until you see something. It's not like Rose or Community have a history of saying, uh, yeah, I'd never say that word. So you don't have to worry there. We always try to be sensitive about things like that. And if anyone did come in chat and say something that was clearly a bad word, I I would I would probably ban them because I, I like I banned someone yesterday for calling me a saying they love a woman who could code. I banned for that. And, like, that person just thought they were giving a compliment. They probably got confused why they was banned. But it's ignorance on their part because it's actually something women don't like to be talked to, to like. I'm going to never say anything more. Yes, mate, it's fine. Don't worry. We're not... It's okay. We don't have to <laughs> get... You know, no one's mad or anything. Let's be friends, okay? Rex is just being a mod, he's doing doing his job, but don't don't take it personally. We we, we there's nothing at all that we're we're upset about by what you said. I think you had a point and it was a fair thing to bring up. So don't worry. It's important. Did I add oh hush? I don't think I did. Um, she said the word love, but it was kind of in sarcasm there. She's certainly not going to say that word um, as a term of endearment because she, she's not. <laughs> yeah, that kind of says that women shouldn't be able to co like it's an uncommon thing. Yeah, and it's also just like boxing someone based on their gender as if there's nothing else about them them being a woman you know like yeah, i don't like that either and it's kind of like but you know you why do you like a woman who okay, it sounds like a very almost like he's it's like you know when guys think they're entitled to a woman and like to date a woman and to be interested in a woman it's kind of almost like that like it's weird it's just it something sat wrong with me with that way he said that so he had to go um yeah yeah it's not a woman the issue is that it can be really confusing and the smiley face can come across as passive aggressive if we're coming up with insults and some of those careful not to be able to make it seem like something we said was ableist yeah well that's why i wanted to make sure because i wanted that's why i asked yasmin to expand because i wanted to make sure there wasn't anything in that list that was because you never know something could have slipped in i kind of just listed everything and didn't really think too much and like i say sometimes i can be a bit naive about those things so it wouldn't be you know it wouldn't be 
out of the ordinary if something did happen. Take care, Yasmin. Hope you have a good day. And don't worry, like, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Don't be upset. We're, we're fine. We're fine. Uh, okay. So I think the ones I've put are mainly the main ones. Could put a few more, but they're honestly the main ones. But I might have a little look again off stream just to make sure I've not missed anything. I'm probably going to make a document specifically for these phrase and word cards for characters. Um, at some point because yeah it'll just get forgotten about if it's here crypt creep creep's a good one um, and I do like alliterations crypt could be good but it depends on the context of who it is I suppose and if it's undead then yeah I guess um but creep, creep's always a good insult. Where's our insult box? I've lost it. Oh, I think it's up here, that's why. So I'm gonna put creep on here too. Right, so we're going to have to think now what to officially replace Buffoon with because, like I say, this will be the last um, scene stream and um, this will be the final opportunity as a community to like have an input in really what's going to be said but that's kind of a lie because, of course, when the scene's actually done, I'm going to... I'm going to pop it in here, as I will with all the scenes in the game. I'll always put a video of them in our scene discussion channel and keep it open for a few days just to let people give feedback. So that way we're not kind of saying, okay, it's done now, no one can say any more, it's over. I'm, I'll be leaving the opportunity for more feedback then. Um, Or some sort of leech related insult. Like someone who's a cling, clingy person, Chubb. Is that what you mean by leech? Rosa, yeah, I suppose she is sort of being a leech. But Carol is, you know. <laughs> Carol's the most clingy ever. She won't leave us alone, that one. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. Because we got some really... No, interesting ones particularly in this box and I really would like to explore um, that but it's it's difficult to commit to any of these simply because of law reasons we don't know what we call Christmas winter vacations or candy stores in our game yeah and of course sometimes it, we can just go with it and just say yeah let's just have a candy store let's just call it Christmas but sometimes I don't want to 100% set those things in place so early um, so maybe it's better to just be simple and pick one of these words that could fit Carol for now I think we said idiot worked best but that was only when we had a few on our list um, maybe there's another one here that could work as well with stop smiling like a um, because I thought fall, dork and moron would be carol fitting words for her based on her, her voice and how she speaks. Um, but there might be some that you guys think would fit carol well here in this list. 
and I do like the woodless double U ones as well but I think for the context of this going for something more simple could be the most effective and weirdly that's why idiot worked because it's it's simple even though it's like pretty common it had the, mo the most the best ring to it I meant that they suck blood and are just annoying to deal with oh vampire see that's me being slow chub it was a vampire insult I get it it's good I get it and we've already got Cruncher as a vampire sign. It doesn't hurt to add more. Um, that's for sure. I feel like I need to get vampire insults here too. Then now we're listing them. Crunch is one that we've kind of confirmed because that was used in a few scenes back um leech is another and you know would he could carol should we make i guess the question is shall we make cruncher exclusive to carol for the vampire in so like as in all she calls vampires are crunchers because sometimes that'll allow the option of the word leech to be used by other people and just give them a bit of distinctness in the way they speak so I do like that we've got that as an insult because it's a really good one. Um, but who knows, maybe it could suit another NPC um, that maybe wouldn't fit calling Rose a cruncher. Um, right, so I'm going to just read like so. Only, only, only so you can paint a picture of me. Stop smiling like an idiot. Stop smiling like. Well, this is the pic. This is Rose. This is how she looks. This is a face. Is that an idiot face? Because <laughs> I suppose we have to make it make sure we it fits with how she looks. Um, stop dork. It's a dorkish face, I guess. Stop smiling like a dork. I kind of like dork, but is that word acceptable? I'm paranoid now. But that word is now a, a bad word. I always just get paranoid. Um. <laughs> I'm thirsty. That nearly went everywhere, but I <laughs> nearly went everywhere. Okay, so Carol's mean. That is something we have to realise as well, guys. She's an a a bit of a a mean lady, to put it politely. <laughs> but uh she's gonna grow on us throughout the game. That is kind of the goal here. So it doesn't hurt her to be a bit mean sometimes. Not every character is going to be nice. So I have, where's my uh, internet? Here it is. So I have put dork because that's kind of, I mean, normally if we had more time and we was early in the stream, I would have put a poll up for some words, but we, we, we getting towards the end and we don't have a stream now until Monday and I want to get the scene stuff done, especially this part. So for that reason, I'd rather it be a quick decision made in chat today for this particular bit. But me, I don't know what's wrong with me today. I'm full of wind. Um, so I've put dot because it, it, fits the most in my opinion but there was some others that could have easily fit as well um idiot was good too but i think because dork is a bit less heard a bit less often it feels a bit more unique than idiot and i could imagine carol saying it because she seems like she She's a bit of a fuss pot when it comes to 
who she associates with, bit of a snob even, bit up herself. And I could imagine someone like that using that word. Okay, guys, so, right, where are we? We we are, unfortunately, I don't know why, because it feels like five minutes ago when I started streaming, but we unfortunately are coming towards the end of our stream. But, um, yes, lots of scene work still to do. We've still got so much dialogue to put in, as you can see, when we've gone through our document, there's loads more, which is why I want to get knuckled down and do a, a lot of that off stream. Um, because I it's I find with scene work doing it off stream is best because I it's focused time and it's very repetitive with all the changes and test plays. Um, and that doesn't mean I won't do, don't won't ever do scene work on stream because obviously I will. It's a very important part of the game. But I think for now, because we've spent so long on it now, it'll be good to do the rest off stream and just move on to other other important tasks. Um, this week next week now which will be we'll get some character sheets and we'll chill for a bit get take from the game dev side of things while i work on that off stream and we'll just do some character sheets because i know lots of people are waiting and, and want to uh and want to see their characters but i'm going to take us to a stream guys i think before we head off so who wants to come and raid exclamation mark raid thanks for hanging out guys and for all the feedback and all the awesome ideas you had some really good insult words chat and i appreciate that okay so um thank yay rex is coming with us okay then so um lacia is online um and lacia is awesome so we should go say hi to lacia Okay, guys, so I will see you all on Monday. Have an awesome weekend and take care. I'm excited to do some character sheets next week. And I will pop that scene in the Discord when it's done as well. I'll keep you updated throughout stream next week with how this scene's getting on. So take care, everybody.